Hey everyone and everything, this might just be my own personal cocktail of neurodivergencies, but I'm gonna describe a situation in Tears of the Kingdom, and I just wanna know if this has happened to anyone else. So you're zooming around Hyrule in your flying machine of choice. Maybe it's a hover bike, or a goblin glider, or a fidget spinner, or some kind of spinning Beyblade monstrosity. But whatever it is, as you're flying over one of Hyrule's many roads, you're overtaken by this urge to swoop down and fly as close to the ground as you can. Maybe even try and graze along the road, and roleplay as one of those plebeians constrained by Earth's gravitational pull for a moment. However, as soon as you actually touch the road, Ladies and gentlemen and NBs in between, I have been plagued by this scenario since the day the game came out, and have longed for a vehicle that can transport me across land and sky interchangeably. Now you may ask why? If you have a perfectly functional flying machine, you've unleashed your earthly tether. You need never worry about the lowly terrestrial lifestyle ever again. But that's just it, really. Flying in a straight line towards exactly wherever I want to be is really… well… It's certainly not exciting. It's absolutely efficient, but in the back of my mind there's always the idea of the Master Cycle from Breath of the Wild. This motorcycle that completely devoured Hyrule neath its mighty gallop, which I could merrily drive down the face of a cliff and level out at the bottom with a smile. The terrain is what makes that kind of traversal fun. It's engaging to weave through trees, avoid gaps and bridges, and take sick jumps off of rocks. Now, despite the efforts of the greatest minds of our generation, no one's been able to replicate the Master Cycle's speed, maneuverability, and form factor with the tools offered in Tears of the Kingdom. And even if they did, it wouldn't be the same. Especially when considering the depths, strictly ground level transport just ain't gonna cut it. So I have long held the idea of a flying machine that can be driven along the ground when it's fun, and flown when it's necessary, without needing to do any reconfiguring or anything like that. Just hold forward to descend and vroom vroom, hold backwards to ascend and whoosh whoosh. So with no further ado, I introduce you to... The Skeeter. Named for its similar silhouette with this eponymous Mario enemy. The Skeeter is the flying machine motorcycle of the future, capable of reigniting the spark of your highly traversal that may have dulled as you watched it all drift by a thousand meters beneath you. Let me take you through it. The problem with building any flying machine with wheels is that wheels in Tears of the Kingdom are absurdly heavy. We're talking like Mongo Giga Chonk kind of weight. Strapping even one of these to any vehicle will instantly make it twice as heavy. So we can't just strap these things wheelie-neely on anything and still expect it to fly. And likewise, we gotta make sure whatever configuration we go with stays balanced. This is how I ended up with the one-wheel design. Anything more, and you'd need so many fans to offset the weight that it'd be way too energy thirsty to be practical. The small wheel was the obvious choice, though mostly because of the wheel housing that we can attach multiple things to. Now, I think this thing would still fly with three fans, but having four gave it plenty of lift necessary to carry Koroks and Shrine Crystals and whatnot. And honestly, I couldn't figure out a good configuration for three that maintained balance, cause sticking one on the front or back of this thing proved annoying. Speaking of annoying, let's get to the build tutorial. Small wheels are finicky little bastards, so you're gonna need something to keep it upright while you work. I used this pole standee setup that you can make at basically any Bolson construction platform. Now just burn all the rest of this stuff out of here. Eh, Hyrule Restoration Schmestoration, Link's got stuff to do. Now we're just gonna need one small wheel, one steering stick, and at least five fans but preferably six. Stay with me, it'll make sense. Let's first attach the steering stick to the wheel. A big part of making sure everything ends up where we want it with this build is to reduce the amount of spaces on the wheel that the fans can stick to. Once we have that, let's get this bad boy mounted up on our stand. Now, attaching all the fans diagonally is, as you probably know, the best way to give yourself vertical control on a flying machine. Anything else, and the only way you're gonna be descending is by killing the power, which can be less than graceful. However, there is very little automatic snapping when it comes to diagonal fans, so here's where things get funny. There appear to be two positions on each side of the wheel that the game is willing to let us snap to. One higher, one lower. Let's attach a pair of diagonal fans to the lower position over top the yellow symbol. Now, with those in place, let's work on attaching another pair of fans to the back end of the wheel. We want to use the first pair of fans to attach these as low as possible on the back end, pushing up against the corners to line up our fans to these positions on the wheel. It's very important that we not attach these to the first set of fans, but to the wheel itself, because once we've got them in position, we're going to detach those forward fans and reattach them on the higher snapping location we noticed earlier. Now it's the same routine. Let's attach another pair of fans to the front of the wheel, once again using that middle set of wheels as templates to force our fans to attach to these tiny spaces up here, basically on the eyes of the wheel. Once you've got everything in place, it shouldn't be hard when you're looking super close to see if your fans are all symmetrical on the vehicle. As with any flying machine, an asymmetrical vehicle will absolutely get you where you want to go, but one that's perfectly balanced as all things should be will be just that much more satisfying. So fiddle around until you're willing to settle. Once that's done, we're going to detach the middle pair of fans and the support beam. At this point, the vehicle is technically done, but of course, it'll only save to our blueprints upon adding 
something to it, not removing something. This is definitely one clear advantage this has over more traditional flying machines. We can easily detach and reattach the steering stick on top of the wheel, not only to save the plan we want, but in the orientation that we want too. So now we've finished up our Skeeter. Let's take it for a spin and see what we can do. Now I stress that the whole point of this vehicle was basically just to make traversal more fun for myself, and I am fully aware of the fact that this is never going to beat out the more ubiquitous designs in terms of sheer usefulness. It ascends and flies a little slower thanks to the extra weight of the wheel, but it can do a number of things that those vehicles can't, apart from, of course, riding directly along the ground at high speeds. The Skeeter can also travel on water. Ground and water transport can make it much easier to bring your machine with you when heading in and out of caves, and therefore not having to worry about it despawning. I find it overall much more capable of maneuvering tight spaces than any other flying machine I've driven, which I put down to the heavy center of gravity keeping it from capsizing in many situations. It can even drag itself straight up cliff walls, which is ridiculous, but undeniably practical. Not to mention, just having the extra visual flare of the wheel spinning in midair backwards or forwards depending on your input is just that much more interesting to look at. Like, I can imagine it as the engine of my flying machine. One thing I will say is that it does not work on sand or snow, and in fact can have a lot of trouble even taking off from those terrains. But you can, of course, just fly directly over those. On any other ground, though, it really do be zooming. Since you can basically hold forward regardless of what's beneath you, you can maintain your top speeds in a lot of situations where a hover bike would need to pull up. Really, when it comes down to it, this is the first thing I've driven that evokes those feelings of driving around Hyrule on the Master Cycle. It's not the same, but it's simply fun to weave on and off the ground, negotiate your path through a ruin before launching off the edge of a cliff. And then again, maybe I just wanted to make something I hadn't seen anywhere else online. Am I trying too hard to be different, to resist the allure of the top tiers of the kingdom? Maybe. But it's good to stay in touch with the idea that in a game like this, there are no wrong answers. Hey, thanks for hanging out. This is not the sort of thing I usually do, so I appreciate you humoring me. As always, a big ol' shout out to my awesome patrons, and I'll see you in whatever's next.